Tim, I, I want to ask you first about this museum's location. I think a lot of people probably pass by Mentone or are in the, the Rochester, Warsaw area and don't realize this little gem is here. What is the significance of Mentone to Bell Aircraft? Larry Bell was born on Broadway Street here in town. The house is still there. It's the fourth block north of uh, Main Street. He grew up here to age 13 and he moved to California with his parents. We were looking at a, a video a few minutes ago of the museum's, or of the company's past, and it mentioned that he liked to come back here periodically. Was there any commercial activity associated with Bell Aircraft here, or was it just mainly a hometown connection? The only thing that would be remotely associated with Bell was the Frank Manufacturing, who made stretchers, which are in place here on this helicopter. That was really the only connection with Bell. He at one time had mentioned building a factory here, but that didn't come to pass. He didn't live long enough for that to happen. All right, now, I think, if nothing else, World War II, the era between World War II and Korea, especially the Bell 47, became and, and still is the most recognized helicopter profile of all time. For newer folks, I think they probably may have discovered it through the reruns of, of the TV show MASH. Talk about this machine we're sitting in and how it got started and how it was used by our military. Well, we have some pictures over here that would, would detail the military version. We're going to repaint this, try and make it look exactly like a MASH helicopter from a TV show. Of course, the Bell Aircraft built fixed-wing fighter planes during the Second World War. The helicopter was more of a curiosity for all the aircraft manufacturers. Larry's one of the few that saw the potential in it, decided that we're not going to compete with the fixed-wing companies after the war, we're going to build helicopters. And that's after building a lot of fixed wings. They built uh, approximately 12,000 fighter planes, the P-39 and the P-63, plus a lot of experimental stuff. They also, after the Second World War, went into the missile business, also the aerospace business, which Neil Armstrong credits Bell's LLRV for making him be able to land on the moon. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to do it. I mean, so just a few of the things that Bell was into. Back to this, this particular machine, what do you hope to, you mentioned you hope to restore it to look like the Korean War era MASH helicopters. What's it going to take to do that? I mean, I noticed you have a Franklin engine back here. Franklin engines, the original engine in this helicopter. The MASH helicopters, if you look close, have a cross fuel tank on it, or a tank that crosses the back of the aircraft. Uh, this particular one had saddle tanks on it. That's really the most obvious out, outward difference. And then, of course, each military helicopter is equipped uh, however they need it. Some of them have tubs on the side that to put the stretchers in with some windshields on them. And we're trying to find those things. And other than that, we get a bubble we'll put on this, and we'll be ready to bring Alan Alda in, make him feel at home. Well, uh, let's let's talk about the experience. What the experience must have been like for the guys who were rescued by Medivac in Bell 47s. I mean, I. At the, at the time, it would have been very rare for any American in his early late teens or early 20s to ever have flown in a helicopter before. And so a lot of these guys had their first helicopter rides horizontal on the outside of a 47. That must have been something. We had a gentleman in the museum several years ago that came in and had been rescued by a Huey in Vietnam. And he was here to say thanks to whoever he could simply because Bell saved his life. If someone wants to participate in the restoration of these financially, how do you ask them to get in touch with the museum? BellAircraftMuseum.org would be the best way. Or we're at Post Office Box 411, Mentone, Indiana, and you're more than welcome to send a contribution. And if someone happens to look up in their barn rafters and has a narrow bubble for a 47G, you'd, you'd like to talk to them? It would be most helpful if you'd talk to us, and we'd be happy to talk to you. We'll see what we can do. We'll make a deal. Aero TV is brought to you by... Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. 
Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer.